Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com weekend update show. Uh, I want to welcome aboard all our folks who are joining us via uh, YouTube, uh, StockTwits, uh, Facebook, and the Twitter platforms. Again, we broadcast this uh, every weekend and uh, obviously this goes out. Uh, Monday through Thursday to all our good folks. So uh, big news continues to be the strong, aggressive uh, stampede. I mean, that's the bas basic way to say it, uh, of the bulls. Uh, again, there's a, there's a very big myth out there, and I hear this coming from a lot of uh, new traders. And, and unfortunately, this is just a, it, it, it's not the truth, okay? Uh, market makers are not holding up or holding down the market algorithms are not pushing up or pushing down the market. There's a human element to everything. For every algorithm that's out there, there's a human being that's programming that algorithm. Okay, Algorithms are built and are created very exaggerated via price action. So based on that person who is uh, doing the formula, it's based on their specific price action, headline, whatever the case may be. So buyers and sellers, at the end of the day, when you, bear, when you break down trading, to the most bearish form, that's what it's all about, okay? Buyers, when they clean up sellers, stocks go higher. Sellers, when they clean up buyers, stocks go lower. So for the old, all the new generation of traders out there, you have to really, you know, you have to really be careful of the information that you're hearing. It's just nonsense. You hear this from 22 year olds that are teaching 20 year olds how to trade stocks. You're, you're, you're trading for 30 minutes. You don't, you have, you, you hardly have any hair in your nuts. What are you possibly teaching somebody else about trading? It's wives' tales, okay? Buyers and sellers are the most important part of trading, okay? There's an aspect of sentiment. Everybody understands sentiment. Everybody understands how it works. There's a market structure. There's balance in, in these charts and technical analysis at the end of the day will be the defining point of you being uh, a winning successful trader or a person who is chasing their tail with misinformation, misguided, miseducation and all that good stuff that's going to make you a statistic on the revolving door. So please, before you put out information into the world, just understand what you're saying. You know, really look at the market, look at the structure of the market. The market is not trying to trick you. We'll show that uh, in a little bit later. Uh, again, you don't need you know, you don't need to be the smartest trader in the world, but you got to wake up and, and just realize that the dynamic market structure, it is what it is. The market's very methodical. The market is very lethargic. It keeps on doing the same thing over and over again. It's the new crop of traders that keep on going in and out of the proverbial revolving door. They're the ones that are making excuses. They're the ones that are uh, putting themselves in the, in, in the lack of information age, and they're ultimately putting themselves on tilt. So, you know, if you're a new trader, again, the most important part is price action. Our opinions, we've been saying this for years, means absolutely nothing. It's all about price action. And, you know, so when you, you hear a trader on social media talking about, well, the algorithms are holding up the market, the market makers are holding up the market, understand the market makers are dead, the business is dead. My, my, one of my better friends from years and years ago ran one of the biggest uh, sell side desks on Fleet, right? Fleet closed down. The only There's only several market makers left. There's Nitrimark that makes... I don't even know if Knight, Knight's even, even uh, I think Knight's still around. Uh, they make their bones on OTC order flow, uh, USB, uh, UBS. It's just not, there's only a handful around. Any market maker that you see, they're not trading for their own account. It's a 22, 23 year old kid just taking retail customer order flow. This isn't from 15, 20 years ago. They're not controlling anything. It's, it's just like the specialist. The specialist is not sitting there trading against the order flow. They're, they're keeping an orderly market. So again, there's a lot of myths in the market. Please don't pray. Uh, you know, pray victim to the nonsense that you hear on social media. It's just not true. It's just it's just not right. And these are all crutches. These are all uh, these are all excuses. And it's basically saying you don't have the process, the necessary guidelines to get you from point A to point B. It's the truth. It's, you know, it's a self reflection moment that you have to actually wake up. And you know, I used to make a lot of excuses. As well, I'm not smart enough. The market's too hard. Again, you got to get over it. Or you're not. Okay, there's two different ways, and you're either trading or you're, you're trading improperly. And sometimes you need to hear the truth to kind of wake yourself up. So, big, big moves uh, in the markets this week. Okay, again, uh, the bears dropped their ball somewhere around here. We talked about this 
uh, last week, this potential rolling top. Uh, we had three days of downside action, right? It looked like it was about to get hairy. And then here is one of those scenarios that the market just kind of bottomed out without testing any support, which was actually insane. And then not only that, it just started going on this mega, you know, mega run. So you had the NASDAQ, uh, you had the NASDAQ surging almost 4% for the week. I mean, incredibly strong. And all those days that the NASDAQ big names just weren't participating, the Amazons, the Googles of the world, the Netflixes of the world, they just weren't participating, the Apples of the world, they just woke up. I mean, and it, it's, it's like trying to poke uh, at a sleeping giant. Eventually that sleeping giant's gonna wake up and it's gonna crush you. So the balance of power, again, clearly, I mean, just now for the, for, you know, since the last, you know, two months or so has been on, on the buy side. Uh, you know, you will get, you will get a, occasional, uh, you will get occasional um, selling pressure names. Again, Boeing was uh, the biggest name uh, this week and some of the craziest volatility uh, you'd ever see. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Tesla again this week, just phenomenal stock. We traded it Monday through Monday through Thursday on the long side. Okay. And Friday, absolutely phenomenal trading to the downside as well. So that continues to be a great stock. Again, we say this all the time. If you think it's going to a thousand, great. If you think it's going to zero, great. Don't at me. Okay. I don't want to hear about it. I trade channels. I hear I traded both to the long side. I trade both to the short side. It's all about value in those channels. Everything for me about Model T, Model Y, Model Z, it doesn't make a difference to me. I don't care if they come out with a steering wheel, three wheels, no engine. It doesn't make a difference. It's still the best stock ever. Um, I thought going back to 2003, 2004, that Taser was the best stock ever. This is three times, 10 times better than Taser uh, ever was. So hopefully uh, everybody had a really, really good a week of trading. Um, I, I, again, I, I think that the biggest misconception uh, of trading, and I get this question a lot, and the question is, you know, how do you know? And this is, again, this is applying to new traders, okay? When, when I make these video guys, for all you guys who are old farts like me, who've been trading 10, 15, almost 20 years, it's going to be 20 years for me in May, this doesn't apply to you. We, we know what we're doing right now, right? We know what we're doing. You guys, this is not for you. You know, everybody's set in their own ways. You can't teach, you know, old dog a new trick. What's been working for year after year after year, it's going to keep on working. A again, because we, we've omitted what not to do, and that's the most important part. But for the new trader, you know, again, I don't target the new trader, but again, there's value in a new trader to figuring things out early so you don't have to pay for, you know, you don't have to pay to play. You don't have to pay for the years of education. You could, you could curb, you can, you can literally curb your learning curve. You can, you can, you can make it smaller. And the most important part is education, understanding why to trade, why not to trade, why there's uh, intervals in the market that are more aggressive and they're more passive. And one of the biggest questions I always get is, well, well Dan, how do I know how to increase and decrease my size? Uh, there was somebody in the webinar, I believe, in the live webinar, I believe it was Ivan. If, if it wasn't you, Ivan, I, I, I apologize. I'm going to use him as a guinea pig. And the first question was, and we'll explain to you guys what this is in a second, but the first question was, well, Dan, how do I know to increase my size? Okay. Like, how do I know? Okay. How do I know? And the, the, the art of increasing size is a very, very delicate conversation because number one, you don't want to freak yourself out. Okay. If you're a trader and you're trading 500 shares, right? It's $5 a penny, right? Every 10 cents is $50 a penny on and on and on. If you go from 500 shares to 5,000 shares, well, then you go from $5 a penny to $50 a penny and people emotionally, they can't embrace that shock to the system that, well, it's great if it's going up and you're making 50, 100, 200 dollars every single time it ticks. But the problem is when it goes against you and you're used to $5 every single penny and now you're getting 50, right? And five cents, you're down 250 bucks. It's a shock to the system. So there's a very delicate way to kind of give yourself a raise, okay? Number one, before you give yourself a raise and you start allocating tier size aggressively, Number one, and I said this uh, in the live webinar, you have to be bored of making money, 
Now, again, before you jump out of your shoes and say, what the hell does that mean? It's very, very simple. When a trader finally has that light bulb, and I don't care who you are, I don't care what type of stocks you trade or options, futures, whatever the case may be. Whenever you get that light bulb, that aha moment, okay, and you completely engulf all the information and embrace whatever your process is. I trade pivots, okay? Whatever your process is and you embrace it, okay, and you truly believe in it and you start making $50 a day, $100 a day, $200, whatever the number is, okay? Everybody's account size is relative, so it doesn't make a difference. I'm just using uh, easy numbers just to kind of grasp kind of my point. So when you're at that point that you are so comfortable in your trading, you're so confident in what you're doing, you're playing to win, you're trading to win instead of trading not to lose. All those important factors that you believe that slowly but surely you have the confidence and skill set that you can walk on water, okay? That's being called being bored of your process, okay? When that's a case, and that's a, an unbelievable case, and, and many new traders will never ever get to that point because they're all over the place chasing hot stocks and 12 different alert services and all that great stuff, they never get to that point. But when you trade methodically, okay, and you trade lethargic and you trade boring, making money becomes boring. So when a new trader finally gets it, I do believe it was Ivan who asked, and he, I think he was, he's been in the webinar for like a month, month and a half, and he's, he's doing very, very well. And he turns to me and he said, well, how do I know, you know, when do I know when to, when to raise my stakes? And that statement right there or that question right there uh, really told me that, well, now he's comfortable. You know, he understands what he's doing. He wants to now give himself a raise. And the best answer to that is when your trading becomes so boring that you're able to make money every single day or make money on most days and you're completely in control of your trading and it becomes so seamless. It's like watching a, a deer, right? Run, run, you know, they, they, they run with, so, with such little effort that it becomes so normal for you and so boring. That's the best way to finally realize, well, you know what? I can start scaling my size up. So if you're trading 100 share lots, you know, maybe go to 200 shares. Again, don't, you don't need to go from 100 to 5. Go to 200 shares. If you're still bored at, five, at 200 shares, go to 400 shares. Put yourself in a position that, number one, you're not bored anymore. Okay? And, I, and I don't say that in an arrogant way, obviously. It's a, it's a more methodical way of controlling your trading. Once you get to that level that you, you are comfortable and the most important part is you're not giving a shock to your system that the share size is overwhelming mentally, that you can't control the trade technically and you start going emotionally, that's when you know you start to giving yourself a raise. Uh, the traders who find early success and they're making money for like a week, right? And they go from 1,000 to 3,000 shares, they get a jolt to the system, they get shocked, they start trading even smaller, right? Even smaller than they started with. And it's a, it's a tremendous mental hurdle to get over, okay? It's, it's, it's actually a harder mental hurdle to get over the second time around than you did initially. So everything in trading is very gradual. But the, the biggest question I, I, I get asked is, well, I made some money in, in the morning, I gave it all back in the afternoon, what the hell do I do to make it stop? And this has been kind of a formula, all right? This has kind of been a formula for me for many, many years, okay? For many, many years, and it's worked incredibly well because I finally understood and it made sense to me why, okay? So there's an old adage, right guys? There's an old adage and I hear everybody saying it and it's happened to me years and years and years, years and years and years ago uh, because I, you know, just like everybody else, I go through the same thing as every other trader. And you ever hear the old adage that somebody turns around and said, oh my God, I just gave back my whole month. I just gave back my whole day in the afternoon, right? You don't hear, you, you very rarely hear I gave back my whole day in the morning, okay? People always say, I gave back my whole day in the afternoon. And there's a reason why, right? You ever hear that old expression, smart money trades in the afternoon and dumb money trades in the morning, right? For years and years and years, I heard that statement and I said to myself, I don't get it, okay? I just don't get it. I trade in the morning, okay? You know, although I'm the king of the idiots, I'm far from a dumb guy. At least I don't consider myself a dumb guy. How can I be part of the dumb money? How could the smart money be trading in the, in the afternoon when, when the ranges are contracting? I can't make a dime in the afternoon unless the market sells off and there's a very, very aggressive sneaky pivot or something structural that, that will give me an advantage in the afternoon. How can you turn around and say dumb money trades in the morning, right? I mean, again, again, I'm trading in the morning. 90% of my day is in the morning. 95% of my day is in the morning. How can it possibly be the wrong thing to do? 
And the more I stepped back, okay, the more I stepped back and really thought about this, this statement, it really makes a lot of sense, right? Guys, think about it this way. Okay, think about it this way. So you wake up in the morning, the average trader wakes up in the morning, the first thing they do, and I say this for years, is the absolute worst thing you could possibly do for your trading career, is look at that pre-market high list or pre-market low list, depending which way you're looking at the market. But for most traders, I assume when you're first starting out, you're looking at the hot stock, right? The hot stock that is up 950,000%, right? 950,000%. And you're ready to trade that stock at 9.30 with 22 seconds left, right? Because if you're not trading by 9.31, you've missed your window, right? Okay. So everybody wakes up in the morning and they're very excitable. They're ready to go. They're ready to jump on anything that moves. They look at the hot stock of the day. And as soon as the market opens up, everybody's chasing stocks. Everybody. The stock's up 300%. I don't care. I need to make 10 cents. The stock's up 500%. I don't care. I need to make 10 cents. Blah, 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 blah. The cycle comes on, comes on, comes on. So what happens, right? What happens? 50% of those guys and gals are going to make their money. And 50% of those guys and gals, they're going to lose money. Okay. And what's going to happen is it starts to make uh, a very, very destructive path to your trading career. The next day you're going to do the same thing. And what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is now the same thing. Now you're a part of the traders who lost money. And rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. You don't need to tell me I'm wrong. I was a part of this. Okay. Uh, not necessarily to this degree, but I was a part of this like every other trader that starts out trading. So you can tell me, no, that's not true. That's not true. We all know it's true because it happened to every single person. What happens is by the time lunchtime rolls around, Okay, and the most extreme chasers that are not educated, that don't have a process, that don't have just any structural balance in their aspirations of being professional traders, once they kind of blew their, you know, blew their, uh, you know, blew their bullets. I want to keep this kind of PG. Once they blew their bullets and they have nothing left, they're very, very discouraged, right? The stock went up, you know, $2 and you wind up getting killed on the stock. Oh, dear God, I'm, it's the end of the world, the black cloud, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The problem is with them, they want to make it back. Okay. They, they absolutely make it back. So what they do around lunchtime to about one o'clock, they said, all right, look, I lost money. I'm going to try to make it back. I'm ready to go again. And you notice how a lot of stocks, no matter what you're trading, they'll give that and I, and I usually say that lunchtime candle, that there's a lot of value, at least for me. It's that, that's what we call the sneaky pivot. And we'll talk about that, the specific pivots from Friday. We'll see what I'm saying. But lunchtime for me is a very, very value area. And lunchtime, unfortunately, is, is an incredibly last ditch effort. It's like almost the, like the last gasp of success for early chasers. So for the guys who, and the gals, who lost money in the first two, three hours, now they need to make their money back. Okay, so they're going to any uptick, they're going to jump right back in this trade, and that's their last gasp. So by the time that around 1 2 o'clock comes around, they are mentally defeated. The uneducated trader is mentally defeated. The trader with no process is mentally defeated. They're running out of money, they're running out of time, they're running out of patience, they're losing their confidence, and all that good stuff. And again, yet they still won't realize and still won't look in the mirror and say, hey, there might be a better way. Again, that's a different conversation for a different day. So by the time that one to you know one to two o'clock comes along, guess what happens? And this happens in every single stock. What's going to happen because there are no more chasers, right? There are no more chasers. There's no more, or at least for the general part, there's no more chasers. Um, the last ditch effort to kind of seize the day or take the control, seize the control of the day back is kind of gone. What happens is because the stock, no matter what stock you're trading, 90% of the average true range, and that could be Amazon, that could be some $3 stock or anything in between. The average true range of that stock, 90, 95% of it is gone, right? It's gone. It's already made its move. We're already in candle four out of the six candles of the day. So what happens is there's no room right? There's no rooms. The meat of the bone has been eaten. The only thing left are, you know, maybe you get some crumbs, maybe you get a piece of lettuce, maybe you get a French fry left.
But the meat has been eaten. No matter what stock it is, the meat, the majority of the meat has been eaten. Maybe you'll find a piece of meat on the floor if you dropped it as eating like a, like a degenerate pig like sometimes I do. Maybe you'll pick it up, right? Sneaky. Kiss it up to God, right? Again, okay. but the majority of the meat is gone. So what happens is after like one, two o'clock, the ranges start to contract, okay? So when your channels are contracting, you have no room in the trade. It's gonna bounce into supply, back to demand, into supply, into demand. And depending what you're trading, if you're trading, for example, Netflix, it could be trading in a 50 cent channel for three hours. If you're trading Amazon, I've seen Amazon most days trade like a $3 candle literally for the last two hours of the day. So there's no room. So if you're trading a $2 stock, Jesus, I mean, you're talking about, you could be looking at a stock that's trading at a four cent range for the last two, two candles of the day. So the contraction candles are gone. The emotional chases are gone, right? They're all gone. And then you kind of have a flat line candle most times into the end of the trading day. And this is where, quote unquote, the smart money comes in, okay? Because they're not chasing anymore, okay? They're not emotionally attached to what they're doing. They are positioning themselves for the next day. So when you see, for example, like Amazon sit there for the last two hours of the day and then the next day, because the market's so strong, gap up 20, it's smart money accumulating the last two days. I don't have an advantage trading it on most days in the last two candles because it's trading in a $3 range, most days. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. But majority of traders who are building a position for the next day, that's where they come in. So it makes all sense if you think about it. The dumb money, us idiots, the degenerate schmucks that wake up in the morning and want to day trade this market, and again, I'm part of it, okay, they are, we are, okay, all the aggressive volume, whether you're chasing or taking advantage of the uneducated trader, you are the aggressive value, okay? You are the aggressive volume in the first three hours of the day. That's the dumb money. That's what they call the dumb money because that is where the most of the uneducated gets completely destroyed day after day after day. So by the time you get back into the afternoon and you're trying to make up your day in the afternoon, there's no value left, okay? There's absolutely no value. So for all the traders that are trading aggressively in the afternoon, there's a better shot that you will give back most of your day. If you're trading irresponsibly, okay, and you don't realize that every interval has a value tier to it, you will give back half your day. You will give back a lot of your day because again, at this area of the day, the emotional chasers have no bullets left. Think to, keep this in mind. For a stock to go higher, for somebody, for you to make money on your long trade, somebody has to be more willing to pay a higher price than you. And if the afternoon, these guys are gone, and these guys have last graphs of success, think about this logically. Who is chasing your stock? Right? It makes all sense when you actually think about it. So here's kind of the formula that I set out for myself years ago. I'm pretty much full size based on obviously the value of the day, the sentiment, all that good stuff that plays a lot into it, the liquidity. Uh, but in the normal market, let's just say in the normal market, from 9.30 to 12 is full size. Okay, you got to trade full size because again, in the back of your mind, your process is better than the person on the other side of the trade. Remember, we're not betting on a stock. We're betting that our process is better than yours, right? And think about it. For any trade, I don't care how, what you're trading, when you're putting money on the table, you're betting that your process is better than the person on the other side of your trades. So from 9.30 to 12, you're going to be more, most active. You're going to be most aggressive. And you're relying on the fact that the more, most aggressive extreme chases without a process, they're going to validate your opinion. Okay, by the time that 12 o'clock rolls around, I call this the value candle. And that candle, or, or I call it the poodle reversal. For all you guys in the live webinar, you understand why. From 12 o'clock to one o'clock, this for me is a value candle. This is where a stock that's been very, very strong has started to back test and is ready to resume upward bias. Or if the market's trending down, this is a case where the stock is down the whole day, popped up into supply, and now it's ready to, to reconfirm a sneaky candle to the downside. So this is what we call a, a, this is what we call a sneaky candle. The great part about this trade is if you're wrong, okay, you are giving up a third of your size, not half size. You're wrong. You're giving up a third of your size. So let's pretend you make money here and you make money here. 
So I always tell everybody, don't set yourself a financial goal. Don't say to yourself, well, I met my quote of the day, I'm logging off. It's a very, very insane and silly thing to do because you could be holding ace cards. You could be holding aces and kings. The market doesn't give you aces and kings every single day. Luckily, we've been seeing some really, really aggressive sessions, but the market doesn't give you aces and kings. So it's very, very important to understand that you can't trade and just give up a premium hand. You have to keep trading. So what I tell people to do when they're having a really, really good hand, if you must trade in the afternoon, go down a quarter size, right? Go down a quarter size. And if you're wrong on the trade, only, you know, give 10%, allocate 10% of your day, allocate 15% of your day. By, by no means as a professional trader or aspiring professional trader, you should any give up at any time half your day or your full day. That's just irresponsible, and that's called gambling. So for all new traders who are kind of wondering how to tear up, tear down, um, this is the way. I mean, this is the way it's been working for me for many, many years, so I'm hoping it, uh, it helps. So let's get into Friday, right? Ridiculous. Anybody who says that Fridays are... Uh, Fridays are a dead day. You're just, tra I mean, you're, you're looking at the market the wrong way. You really are. You're looking at the market the wrong way. Uh, again, guys, if we, we don't do these updates and cherry pick this. You're look here, here you're looking at the stock to its feed. This is exactly the same thing you can be seeing on the stock, on the Twitter feed. And obviously, uh, what we're playing in the live webinar. The only thing is we, we don't put everything uh, on these feeds because sometimes news breaks fast. We'll talk about Boeing in a second. There's, there's no time. We, we try to allocate only, uh, natural pivots to these things. So you're, you're getting about 80, 85% of what we're doing in the live webinar, but we, we try to stick only to pivots. Obviously, you're not seeing the option flow, you're not hearing our squawk box, all that good stuff. But uh, th again, we're not cherry picking. This is what we're doing throughout the day. Um, so this is how the day started. And, and look how, I mean, you could see how aggressive it was on Friday. Just mind blowing, okay? So here was Boeing. Uh, ranges are getting tighter now. This is at nine o'clock in the morning before the market opens up. Uh, the lower Bollinger Band is 371. If it builds below, can flush. Here's kind of what I was talking about. So, right, so here is Boeing. Here's the 60 minute view on Boeing. Okay, forget about all this. Okay, as you can see here, the lower Bollinger Band is right here, it's 371. And once it started building, and once these Bollinger Bands started to expand, once it got below 371 and started building, this thing got just, just destroyed. You put up a $5 candle. Having said that, right, for all you guys who took that trade, great job. And our squawk box broke this news before anybody. Before, I mean, it was like five minutes. It felt like three to five minutes before anybody was even talking about this, that Boeing was upgrading their software. Congratulations for all you guys who took this trade. You started seeing the 400 calls being peppered over and over and over again. And this damn thing literally went from three you know, 370, 372 to like, I mean, this exploded. It went to 385. So for all you guys, congratulations. Not hitting it not once, but twice. Awesome, awesome job. And then here, here here's my uh, here's my big one of the day. Uh, Tesla 379, pre-market low if it builds. Now, I entered this trade. I actually added it to 279. I entered this trade at 280. And let me tell you why. Um, 279, 279 was... The pre-market low. So that was kind of your confirmation. But if you look here, we've been talking about this level now for a couple of weeks. The low here on the five-day moving average was 280.50, right? So 280.50, the next day's low uh, was 281. So I knew it had to get it below that 280.50. So it gets below that 280.50 and it starts just sitting there and it's at a 280 level. So I start shorting it actually at 280, okay? And I actually added more at 279, okay? And what happened was it went down, I took some flow, it went back up, I broke even on the balance, and then I reshorted the opening range low of somewhere around 270, 278.40s, 278.50s, and this thing got just smashed, absolutely smashed an opening candle and went all the way down to like 275s. My lowest cover were like in the two. 76s. So pretty, I was pretty, pretty happy about this move. Uh, Avago monster moonshot. Uh, Avago 284 pre-market highs. If it builds above, it absolutely goes nuts. Uh, AVGO, look what AVGO does. Here's the pre-market high, uh, 284. All he did is put up a $10 candle. Uh, you had uh, ULTA, again, needs to reclaim 
and build 331 uh, ULTA. Uh, again, here's a 331. Oh, excuse me. Here was a 331 right here. Three, what was it? What was it? Uh, right here. 331. It built a 331. It took out the previous uh, previous after hours high, and this thing exploded the 345. Just, um, it's sick moves. It's absolutely sick moves. Um, you guys want to laugh? I screwed. I I I screwed up this trade. I I actually bought LRCX. This is my only loser of the day. I bought LRCX. It goes up like seventy cents. At that point, I'm actually concentrating on. I'm actually concentrating on Tesla. So I watch it go up seventy cents, and I kind of for some reason lose track in it, and I wind up losing like a dollar thirty on the trade. Don't even ask me how. Uh, and then the stock goes up six dollars. So don't even ask me how I screwed up this trade, but I did. But again. Such as life, uh, ULTA. We talked about uh, TLRA. I started buying. Uh, I started buying this on Friday. Uh, I actually like the chart. I don't play a lot of these smaller cap names anymore, uh, but I really like the chart. Um, so I started buying it at six dollars. It closed at five ninety six. But I, I like this chart. I, I like this chart. I think uh, next week it confirms. So, so uh, you know, this one I started buying for next week. Uh, and then here, this is what we talk about, guys. Uh, the sneaky pivot. You see the time here. This is what we talk about, the sneaky candle between 12 and 1 o'clock. So Tesla, 277.70, line in the sand. If it builds below, it can flush. Again, here's Tesla, right? Here's the two, and here's the 60-minute view, right? Here's the 60-minute view. And where is that? Uh, here it is. Okay, everybody see, what was that? Oh, here it is. Here it is right here. So the low of this candle is 277.70, right? Everybody see that? 277.70. And once it started building below, the stock went all the way down to 74 and a half. Again, that's the sneaky can candle. That's the sneaky pivot. And guess what happens in the last two hours of the day, right? The stock goes sideways, just like a lot of the other names. Uh, but here's the trade. Uh, here's the trade that I that I no, I wanted to show you guys in real time. And I put this, you know, I put this trade out on Twitter. And this is basically shows you guys. Step by step, again, nobody's trying to trick you, man. You don't need a thousand people to buy stock after you to make money. This, this is the stock market, man. This is this is natural buyers, natural sellers, and whoever has the better process is going to win. So I tweeted this out when the stock was around 1705, and I wrote, here's a setup for the afternoon for my tweets. I basically just wanted to show you guys a free setup. This is how it's done. Uh, this is what we're looking for, and here's our profit uh, potential. So here's the setup. Uh, Amazon needs to reclaim 1707, 1708. Uh, again, this is how I started incorporating the option flow. Next week's call buyer comes in with a $713,000 bet. And again, we provide all the option flow in the live webinar in the 1710 calls. And this is what the stock did. I mean, this is, again, this is what, this is what pivots are. So here was a 1706 candle. So it needed to build 1706, 1707. And I, I tweeted out, there's a puncher's chance it gets to 1715, 1716, and this candle went to 1715. So again, guys, nobody's trying to trick you, okay? This is a stock market. Forget about the rhythms, algorithms. Forget about the market makers. Forget about all the social media super flies and so celebrities. You're either trading properly or you are not. Guys, I want to thank you, everybody, for all your support. Uh, again, for, if you guys want to check out, uh, we, we are offering uh, a free one-hour uh, view into the PS60 workshop. Uh, click below my Twitter link. Uh, it's an hour. Yeah, there's, the only thing you have to lose is you know looking at the market the way you normally do. That's the only thing you have to lose. It's going to really open up your eyes to what we do. Uh, and again, we're the only ones who trade this method on the planet. So uh, a lot of things you can find on YouTube. I promise you, you won't find this. So guys, have an awesome, awesome weekend. Hopefully these little tidbits help you guys out. And with God's help, I'll see you guys all next week. Have a great, great weekend, everybody. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.